Starting from scratch, about 30 years ago, rock music came to China for the first time. It was in those early years that many bands such as Tang Dynasty and the Panthers were established. However, the growth of Chinese rock and heavy metal hit some bumps in the mainland. Far from being in line with mainstream culture, it slid into the underground music scene. But it still remained a remarkable part of Chinese city culture. Among them, Tang Dynasty stood out. It was in 1989 that Kaiser Kuo came to China from the US and co-founded the band. Later on in 2001, he built a new band known as Spring and Autumn. Together with his friends in rock and metal music, Kuo has spent decades changing the Chinese city music scene, starting with Tang Dynasty. Uh, a band called Tang Dynasty would immediately resonate with people who understood that the Tang was the, a great dynasty in Chinese history precisely because it was open to external influences, because it was so cosmopolitan, because there was this sort of almost fetish for things that were exotic during the Tang. So that name just came up very easily for it, you? It didn't. It, it was actually the, 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 the result of some long thinking that I did on my part. And the other members agree with you? They did. They did. They liked it, it and it resonated with them really well. I kept it in my back pocket. I waited until we were having the conversation where we were going to come up with the name of the band. And as soon as I said it, they all agreed. This was the name of the band. The style of the band or of your music is very much traditional Chinese music or folk music, but in a grand way, combined with so-called Western style, heavy metal. Yeah, I actually think that it, it in many ways is maybe a, a good cipher for my whole identity, right? Um, I, I've always wanted to find something uh, to promote, to latch onto, and, and, and to elevate in traditional, in what, what is, you know, traditionally Chinese. I always, I didn't think it would be of much interest for me to do, to, to pour a lot of time and effort into a band that was just going to be doing generically Western style music. I always wanted it to do something that, that had, uh, that was recognizably Chinese. <laughs> popular right and it was o almost like overnight popularity yeah so um, let me let's make it very clear that I left in 89 that's right I wasn't here when they got signed I wasn't here when they, they reformed I wasn't here when they, they really got famous by the time I came back in 91 they were already well on the mm. way so I can take like no no real credit for, for, for what, but what still you feel the two extremes it shaped me. Um, I think one of the things that that that, that early moment of sort of stardom uh, did was it, it made me realize I'm not really cut out for that. Hmm. <laughs> and I, I never after that I never really. How thought, did you realize that? I mean, I, I think. What was that, the moment? What was the thing? Uh, there wasn't a, a single moment. I think that part of it was just that, that I never really felt like this was what I wanted to do with my whole life. I never felt like this was going to to be enough for me. I mean, it didn't what? have, well, I mean, I don't want to sound, uh, I, I think honestly, I, I felt ahead. like I, it was sure I was going to be impactful, but I'm a, I was a foreigner. Uh, I didn't want to be a missionary. I didn't want to feel, feel like that, but, but also I wasn't cut out for that life. I mean, I, I may appear to be, you know, a, a, a kind of all night partying rock and roller, I'm actually, I live a, a very uh, kind of normal uh, upper middle class person's <laughs> life. I, I read a lot. I, 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 um, You're a writer. I write. I spend an, an unhealthy amount of time on social media. I mean, I, I do a lot of, of, of um, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm interested in, in things other than music, for sure. I mean, music is, is, is actually not so high up on my list of, 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 of things that I want to leave to this world. So. so you don't think that is the life you want? And also, you know, just the, that lifestyle. It, it, I, I'm not just constitutionally cut out for it. I, I, you know, I like seven or eight hours of sleep a night. I don't really thrive well on that. I can't just eat ramen. And, and, um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a pretty wild life. And I'm, I'm a pretty, well, conservative person in a lot of ways. Back in the 1990s, what was it like? 
It was wonderful. It was, um, <laughs> I think um, I, I still think back with great fondness on those times. There were maybe a hundred people involved in what's called the Yaoan Chuar, the, the, the rock circle. And this, this includes the musicians themselves and the hangers on, the, the uh, producers as far as there were any, the people who owned venues. Uh, all told, there were maybe a hundred individuals in, in it. So it was a really tight circle that it embra embraced a lot of different kinds of music back then. People didn't differentiate clearly among genres. I mean, we all hung out together, uh, irrespective of what kind of music we were playing. Uh, it's gotten a whole lot more fragmented now, but it's also gotten a whole lot more diverse. There were, uh, there's every genre of music under the sun now. But back then, I think part, there were a lot of problems, though. I mean, part of it was that uh, there was so much interest in it. Um, uh, part of it was because uh, the outside media was so interested in this phenomenon uh, that the, the few who were playing in that scene, uh, irrespective of how good they actually were, in, irrespective of how, how much depth they actually had, how much of a pool of talent they could actually draw on personally, they all got famous. Some of them didn't maybe deserve it. I certainly didn't. I, I felt like I landed on a low gravity planet. Uh, I'm a, a stubbornly and decidedly mediocre guitar player. I'm not very good. And I was good enough then, but I certainly, if I were you know, in any other mature music market with my really middling talents, I wouldn't have amounted to anything. So I got very lucky. But it's it's not just about the, the techniques. It's also about having the courage to form a band. Well, hell, I mean, what did I have this? I didn't have anything at stake here. Was I, was I going to starve if I didn't succeed? No. This was, a, again, part of the problem with me is that I had a, a really kind of dilettantish attitude toward it. And I, I regret to this day uh, having imprinted on, on, on rock uh, some of the ideas that I did, which were, which were kind of dilettantish. Which what were, do you mean? I mean, I, I wasn't uh, somebody who had to ever care about the market success of the band. So I, was, I felt totally, uh, a total lack of, 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 of need to, to do music that would appeal to a broad mass. I, I, so we ended up, if you look at Tang Dynasty's second album, for example, you know, probably the average length of song on that album is like eight or nine minutes. It's, they're all ridiculously long. <laughs> some even 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some really ridiculously long songs. On. When uh, Zhang Ju, uh, the bass player of the band, uh, passed away In because May of traffic accident, yeah. and of course uh, everybody were gathering together in order to celebrate his life and many other things. But many wonder whether we have over-idealized that period of time. I just wonder, what do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think that we, we have, to a very large extent, over-idealized that time. That take nothing away from Zhang Ju, I mean, who is a very dear friend, a wonderful guy. He's a warm, He's very warm guy. Wonderful guy, in every way. Uh, the, the problem was, I think, well, first of all, there was no competition back then. There was, there was so little competition that a lot of these bands just couldn't really test their metal against, uh, uh, against one another. Um, it's much more real today. And part of the problem was that back then, because of, of just all that media attention, because all that adulation, because of, of, of that early crop of bands, uh, not all of them could really live up to the expectations. Mm. But they stood there in the way for a lot of other bands that might have been able to, to come out and outshine them. Uh, and forever, on everyone's lips, you know, when they thought of Chinese rock, it was that, you know, Cui Jian Hei Tang Chao. I mean, it was always going to be these, these, these early bands. Early icons. Early icons. And there were so many other bands that came after, you know, uh, that, that were equally deserving of attention that never got it in part because they were always in the shadow. Do you think most of the people in the rock circle realize it just as you did? I think a lot of them do. I think a lot of them now. realize it. I mean, now, at, at the same time, that was a wonderful time. I mean, there, there was this, that, that sense of camaraderie, the, this, this real kind of sense of, of I mean, I think a, a lot of people probably imagine that uh, there was a lot of, uh, of, 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 of challenges, maybe from political authority, uh, that wasn't really the case. There was an awful lot of space for these people to do what we were, for us to do what we were doing. You didn't have, uh, you know, closures and, and cancellations of shows and strict 
censorship of the lyrics or, or things like that. There was almost limitless possibility back then. What was limited was market uh, and the hardware. I mean, there, you know, it was hard to get good gear or good venues to play at, and we, we played a lot of slipshod places, but th there, was, there was a boundless opportunity back then. And what about the band now? I mean, the band the Spring and Autumn. Mm -hmm. Once again, a very poetic name, I would say, in Chinese, of course, in English as well. You disbanded it right before you decided to move to the United States. Yeah. It's, it's a band for more than 15 years. 15 years, yeah. Wow. 15 years. I remember two things about you when it comes to music and this band. One is that on many occasions when we were talking to one another over the years, you were telling me and other friends, you have to go because you have to do rehearsals right. with this band. It's something that you will never give up. No, no, no. Under whatever circumstances, when the date of the rehearsal has arrived, that's the thing I'm going to do. Right, right. Very strict with it. Absolutely, yeah. But that's, that's you know. Is it peer pressure or is no, it? No, 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 no. It's not peer pressure. It's, I mean, it's so fun. I mean, getting together and playing together. I, I don't, I mean, it was, it's even more fun with an audience, of course, but even just being in that one of those underground rehearsal spaces in Beijing, <laughs> when all, when that gigantic sound comes together, it's just, there's something immensely, immensely satisfying. <laughs> But the other thing I remembered when you were with this band, you were telling me that you're very strict about the role that you're playing in the band. Right. A guitarist. Right. Nothing else. You're not going to do the commercials with them. You're not going to be like a, almost a part-time agent for the band, uh, for international market. You're not going to do the website for this band. Right. You're not going to... Uh, go on different kinds of promotional trips with them. You, can, you said, well, use my name, that's fine, but nothing else I would do from my part. Are you being selfish? No, I was being realistic. Uh, for the entire time that I've been with that band, I've had full-time jobs. Or even when I, when I didn't, for one short period of time when I was freelancing as a journalist, um, it, that took all my time. Uh, I, I just knew that I had to limit it. The other thing is I didn't, I wanted to manage everyone's expectations. This was not ever intended to be big famous band. This was always going to be, we'll play small club shows, we'll play festivals, we'll do stuff like that. We'll but do our it for own the stuff. joy. We'll do it for the joy. And we always did, but we never let our, our ambitions get too outsized. Has the joy period gone? No, the joy remained until the very end. And the last show we played uh, on May 31st here at Yugong Shan, right there on that stage, yes. was probably one of the highlights of my life. It was, was so packed, I remember. Yeah, it was just insane. Um, I've never seen a, a bigger density of a crowd. The roof almost off. <laughs> <laughs> we, it, was, it was one of the most just deeply kind of spiritually satisfying moments of, of my life. What was it like for you to stand on the stage? going from piece number one, number two, Well, you know, part of it three, was... Counting almost. Yeah, I mean, part of it, uh, every time we would take off another song and, and play it, I would think to myself, I guess that's the last time I'm gonna play that song in front of a crowd. In front of at least such a crowd. Right, and it was, it was sort of sad. I mean, each, each time. Uh, but also, I was just trying not to, 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 to screw up. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, That's important. That's important. <laughs> there's this thing that happens when you're playing um, where sometimes you find yourself in this zone where you would have to labor hard to actually make a mistake. You become, there's this emergent property when you're playing an ensemble where uh, the music overtakes you and you, 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 you have this muscle memory and you couldn't screw up. I mean, you'd have to actually force yourself deliberately to hit a wrong note. Unfortunately, that night wasn't one of those nights where I, I was actually a little too living it. I was too conscious of it. My, my head was turned on. And so I was really conscious of all the, the possibilities. First of all, we were so drenched in sweat. It was like playing underwater, practically. I mean, I was like, you know, 
So there was there, there were there was a lot of possibility I would over I, I would you know slide past the note that I was looking for or things like that. So I had to to, to to be thinking, and at the same time I wanted to play my heart out. You know I wanted to really bang my head with ferocity and make sure that you know I, I was just getting the most out of uh, my my last show. Uh, what was the last two songs? The last two songs uh, were Tianxia. The, the English name we gave it is the Sub Celestial, and uh, it's in in very many ways it encapsulates what we wanted to do with Chunxiao. Uh It has that kind of dualism. It has some really really pretty, almost classical sounding parts in it, and then some ferocious, really headbanging metal in it. Uh, you know, the Chun and the Chiu, uh, the the kind of yin yang dualism that that we wanted, a and it has a lot of very 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 deeply Chinese stuff in it. The main riffs, the main motifs in it are are all uh, in a kind of strict Chinese pentatonic scale, but with uh, interesting takes. It's supposed to evoke kind of horse-borne warfare. I mean, it has a lot of sort of just galloping sounds yes. in it. Did you hear the shouts coming from the crowd? Of course, yeah. I mean, it was what's lovely about playing the crowd that that that, that likes your music so much is they sing along with every single song. They just know every song by heart. They know all the hits. They know all the rhythms. They know when when to do what. It's almost like they're in part of the performance. How would you say, you know, ten years, twenty years from now, you look back at that day, the last performance of Chunqiu, and almost the the last performance of a continuous professional music life for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably you know uh, missed up a little bit. I'll probably you know <laughs> wipe away a little tear, um, but I'll have a, a, a rueful smile. I mean, I, I'll certainly miss it. There's just no question. Already, I do. I mean, it, the the afterglow of that. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like you know, it, it's like. When you're deeply in love with somebody, but they're you know in high school, but they're going away to college, and or so are you, and you know that you have to break up. It's the sensible thing to do, but you love each other. But you made the decision yourself. But you make the decision yourself, right? right.